Support for Breaking the Barrier in today's episode is brought to you by the Nebraska Rural Radio Association. With 15 stations across the heartland, they are your go-to source for all things rural and agricultural. Whether you're a farmer, rancher, or just love the rural lifestyle, tune into one of the Nebraska Rural Radio Association stations for entertainment, news, and expert insights. Visit RuralRadio.com to find a station near you. Welcome to Breaking the Barrier, a Western lifestyle podcast highlighting those breaking barriers both in and out of the arena. I'm your host, Rebel Seclocha, and Miss Rodeo Nebraska 2023. Today, I'm sitting down with the 2023 Steer Wrestling Resist All Rookie of the Year, Cash Rob. Cash, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. So you had an incredible 2023 season. In your own words, give us the rundown of what that was like for you and what your goals were coming into the season. Oh, it was it was awesome. You know, it's uh, it's something that honestly I kind of underestimated a little bit. You know, I I had rodeoed on my permit pretty good the first two year, two years before this, and you know, and it was pretty busy. But I mean, as soon as I got out here, it was it was crazy. It was unreal. I mean, we were going to one if not two rodeos a day. You know, during the fourth and all that. But it was it was it was fun. It was awesome. I had a blast. Um, uh, as far as goals, you know, I I had the gold making finals. I ended up coming a little bit short of that a little bit of short a little short of that um but I mean other than that I mean I ended up winning the rookie of the year which was great um but no it was fun I had, I had a good time though absolutely uh so I want to rewind just a bit for people who aren't familiar with you or, or haven't been following where did you get your start in rodeo and when did you decide that rodeoing professionally was something that you wanted to pursue uh, I just, uh, I'd always kind of done it. My dad, he, he steer wrestled just kind of at the circuit level and I just, just growing up knowing it, you know, that's, that's all we did really. I mean, I, I wrestled in high school as well, but I mean, other than that, we, we were in the practice pen every day, whether it was <laughs> rain, <laughs> snow or shine, you know, and, uh, I just, I just kind of grew up loving it. It's just something I always wanted to do. And I figured I'd, I'd like to make my money <laughs> three seconds at a time opposed to sitting in the office all day. So. <laughs> Oh, very good. Yeah. Um, well, of course, you know, rodeoing on your permit and then officially declaring this year as your rookie year, what was the biggest learning curve that you faced as you started being on the road full time? Oh, it was all a learning curve. I, I learned so <laughs> much this I learned so much this year that I didn't know I even had to think about learning between whether it was entering or getting up whenever you wanted and just, you know, there's sometimes you didn't have to be, you go blow the barrier out and be a three, you know, you just had to be consistent every time. And that was one thing I learned that looking back on it, I wish I would have done a little more was not trying to win every time, you know, just go be consistent. Um, and I feel like that kind of hurt me a little bit this year, as far as me trying to just go beat whoever's trying to win, you know, I, I just had to go just be consistent. And, uh, if I would have done that a little better this year, I think I would have had a little different outcome, but, uh, but I mean, I think that's the biggest, biggest learning curve. And I'm definitely going to apply that to this next year a lot more. Absolutely. So one thing in the steer wrestling that gets talked about a lot is the camaraderie amongst all the guys that are going up and down the road. Um, what kind of mentorship did you experience this year um, in your rookie year from some of those more seasoned guys? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I was very blessed to be able to go with uh, Tyler Wagaspack, Jacob Talley, and then Rowdy and Remy Parrott this year. And it was it was awesome. You know, I, I learned so much and the, them guys are tremendous. You know, I, I, I really wouldn't have not, I wouldn't have had the rookie year I did if it wasn't for them. You know, they, they helped me out so much as whether it was inside the arena or even outside the arena, as far as, you know, getting places, knowing people to get to talk to and all that and figuring stuff out. So, yeah. So when you were talking about the learning curve of, of entering rodeos and, and stuff like that, Expand on that a little bit more and some of the challenges or strategy that's involved when you're choosing what rodeos to go to. Oh, it's, it, it's crazy. I don't know. Like I never really thought it was like a big deal. You know, I guess I always thought, Oh yeah, you know, you, you'd enter for this and if you get it great, if not, no, you know, but then you, you don't realize when you're trying to fit two, three rodeos in a day that, you know, it's, it, it's tricky and you kind of got to get it. And the, whether it's entering, on someone else in your buddy's group card that's maybe hitting a little bit better than yours or something like that or you know or watching the books and just seeing hey there's there's 19 guys in this performance they only take 10 in the performance we 
maybe we should try for this one and w work our plans out a little bit. It's just you, I never really realized how much paying attention, you know, you had to do until this year. And uh, it's, it's crazy, you know, and I'm still trying to learn how to do it, I guess. So I'm definitely no wizard at it by now, <laughs> by no means. But uh, it's awesome. I mean, I, I feel like I was very blessed to be able to learn what I did, though. Baby steps. And, you know, yeah. the other layer to that is how many horses get shared in the steer wrestling event. Oh, specifically. yeah. So making sure that you're mounted out properly, I'm sure, was a challenge as well. Yeah, we uh we were we were able to have two horses this year out there, uh, uh Casper Jacob Tallies and then she's uh Tyler Wagspack's horse and they were both awesome horses. I I got along great with both of them and uh, about oh, well, I think it was right around Napa time. Uh, Casper came up a little sore, made to send him home, and Tyler was great about letting me and me and Jacob riding it, riding cheese for the rest of the year. There was no if ands or but about it. You know, we were if we wanted on, we could get on and. He worked great for both of us. We all won a lot of money, and uh, we did great on him. And so I just thank him for that. You know, it's just, it's there's there's guys that, that they're out there just to help you. You know, and they'll uh, they'll they'll help you if you know if something like that happens. You know, they're they're right there to help you out. Yeah. So when you're in the thick of things, going to multiple rodeos a day in the heart of rodeo season, there's obviously not a ton of downtime there. But when you do have some downtime, what does your preparation routine look like? Oh, um, I try not to have too much downtime, you know, I feel like as long as you, you, you just keep going, you know, uh, you, you never get unsharp, I guess, you know, but uh, as far as like, um, just working, you know, just work out, try to work out, stay sharp and, you know, work on your mental game too, you know, but uh, just, yeah, just, you, uh, you, you can't get lazy, I guess, um, you know, it's, you, you got to look at this like your business, you know, if, uh, if you got a piece of equipment just sitting in the yard not doing anything, it's not making any money. So you might as well, you might as well keep your keep your body moving and keep everything feeling good, you know. Or else, you know, when when Denver, or Fort Worth, or the next rodeo for the next year comes up, you're not going to be sharp for it. So you might as well just stay sharp. So on the mental side of things, steer wrestling is is such a fast paced event, and you have to make choices in literally milliseconds um where does that mental game come into play or what are things that you focus on when you're trying to get in the zone uh i don't know i guess uh it's just it's just you just gotta stay focused honestly you know you just you can't second guess yourself there's a couple times this year that i second guess myself and it cost me and uh um as far you just gotta you just gotta make sure you stay focused and just know that you've done them a million times you know it's this ain't your first time running the steer you know you've done it a million times so you know what to do don't second guess yourself and just know you can do it so yeah yeah what kind of momentum do you think you have after this season that will help you in 2024 um i think the biggest thing that's going to help me you know is uh i i had i had that knee surgery a couple weeks ago and this is the most bored i've ever been in my life <laughs> and i didn't think i'd miss your wrestling this much but uh um as soon as i they give me the clear i am going to be in the practice pen and that's going to be the biggest fuel for me this year you know i kind of I feel like I have something to prove now, you know, and uh, I'm damn sure I'm, I'm going to prove it, you know, and uh, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. In the preparation process for next season, give us a little bit more insight on your knee surgery. Was this a long time coming? Um, and what is your timeline in terms of bouncing back? Um, no, I, I mean, uh, it just ha it happened in Filer, Idaho. Uh, and uh i i kind of i kind of knew when it happened it was it was pretty well done for um i wasn't inside the top 15 when it happened so i figured you know it's my rookie year let's not kill myself trying to make them especially you know i mean there's 15 great guys up there and even if you do make them I'd, I'd assume be at 100 percent um when i'm there to try to try to win and so i just went ahead and got it done i've uh I've been out for about two and a half weeks after surgery and uh, I'm starting just doing therapy and all that and it's going great, but uh, they should clear me. I should be able to be back for San Antonio and Houston. They them should, my first, should be my first two rodeos back. I want to rewind just a little bit. Who would you say has been the greatest influence on your career thus far or your biggest mentor up to this point? Uh, Tyler Wagaspack's probably been my biggest mentor. You know, I... Uh, I ever since I was in high school, he's 
always helped me, you know, his family's always been great to me about coming down there and practicing with them and all that. And uh, actually, uh, I'm very blessed to be able to live with them right now while I'm in college. And I'm, I mean, we're, we're there every day and I'm able to be able to stay there with them. You know, I got, I got all my college online, so I, I don't got to be at campus. So, I mean, he's, uh, he's letting me stay there, you know, I'll, I'll help them do stuff during the day. And then right around two, three o'clock, we'll start practicing and we'll practice till dark. And that's, that's helped me so much tremendously, you know, just practicing and doing that with him. And he, he sees so much that other people don't is he, it's crazy how good he can break stuff down. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to your resist all rookie of the year honors, that's a very big deal. And while qualifying for the finals or being a world champion seems to be everyone's goal, there's multiple years to to go after that particular one, but you only get one shot at being the resist all rookie. In your opinion, what kind of leg up does uh, this program provide to athletes in their first year? Oh, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it it gives you something. It it just gives you another goal to accomplish. You know, there. Uh, when I when um when I started this year, there was. I, I almost like I wasn't worried about the resist all, you know, until I, I like I, I just knew I had it in my mind. I had like I had it made up. I was going to win like there's like I there. I wasn't going to have it any other way. You know, I just I I, I knew I was going to win. I mean, I'm not trying to sound uh, arrogant, I guess, but like I just had a set in my mind that that's something that I was not going to let. Um, I guess slip out of my grasp or whatever, but uh, it's, it's awesome. They, it's a great deal that they do, you know, it kind of, it gives you a little more recognition, you know, as far as that goes, you know, people kind of start to know your names, I guess, as you're younger and you don't, you don't got to wait till you get to the finals for people to know you. Absolutely. So going through this whole year and having your experience as a rookie, what advice would you give to next year's rookie class? Oh, there's a ton of it. I mean, <laughs> Just, uh, I don't know, just uh, just go do what you know how to do, I guess, honestly. I mean, you, you can't think about it. I mean, you're, you're, you're there, you're, you're, you're there alongside everyone else. You know, you just got to think you're as good or better than everyone else, you know. Um, there, there'd be times, you know, when I doubt myself and like, oh, well, you know, like there's a ton of good guys here. Like there's, I'm going up against a hundred guys, you know, and then, you know, and you'd almost kind of beat yourself, but you just can't, you can't let that happen. You know, you gotta, you gotta know you're, when you're backing in the box, you're the best man there. And, you know, and in all honesty, it's, you, you, you're your biggest enemy when you're out there. It, it, it's crazy how hard it gets and stuff, but you just got to keep telling yourself, you know, like you got it. Like there's, you can't doubt yourself because when you start doubting yourself is when, you know, it's not good. Mm-hmm. So I guess that'd be the biggest thing is to quit. Just don't doubt yourself, you know, just believe in yourself and just go do what you know how to do. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like your goals in your rookie year were very clear. What does your goal setting process look like? Um, and how do you draw those out? Oh, I, I don't know. I guess it's just, it's just the same as it's just, I did, my, my goals have been the same since I was in high school. You know, I wanted, I wanted to be known as one of the greats when I'm done, as far as rodeo goes, I want, I want to be remembered, you know, I want to be talked about 20 years from now, you know, and, uh, that's still my goal, and that's always going to be my goal. And uh, no matter how many you know world titles or NFR qualifications I get, like that's that's all great. But I I want to be remembered forever, kind of deal. You know, I want to be the the O'Berry, the Steve Dohan, the J- John W. Jones. You know, I, that's what I want to be. Absolutely. Well, as we kind of round out our interview, I do have a few more fun questions for you. Um, yeah. I'd be curious to know what was your favorite rodeo you attended this year. Oh, um, that's a tough question. I've had a lot of people ask me that, and honestly, I I had fun at every rodeo. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a lot of fun in California, like at Clovis and all that. Those were really fun. Uh, I was able to go to Calgary. I guess Calgary probably would have been one of my fun, like my more favorite ones. You know, I didn't do as good as I wanted to there, but it was just it was a really cool rodeo, and uh, that was really fun. And then. I guess, you know, just me being from Utah, I'm kind of partial to the Utah rodeos. So, <laughs> them are all blast too. So, <laughs> but uh, no, I had fun. Uh, Napa was a fun one. I, I will say Napa was fun too. Absolutely. But I guess I don't have exactly one, but I have a couple. Yeah, absolutely. I guess yeah. I should back up. What kind of setup uh, for a rodeo is most ideal for a steer wrestler? Or what things do um, you make your job easier? Honestly, I mean, fast setups are so easy you know just because you don't think about it you just gotta go do you know california that was my first time actually having to see something out 
And, uh, you know, I broke the, every barrier in Red Bluff, California, I think, <laughs> this year just because I couldn't score. But uh, it was better at Clovis, you know. But uh, that was fun. Uh, but I, I – me personally, you know, I like the fast setups. You know, you just – you don't you don't think about it. You just go do it. And, you know, if you if you do great, great. If not, oh, well, you know, kind of. But I like the fast setups. I liked them all. You know, like when we went to Cheyenne and all that, I had fun. And it was cool. You know, it's just different. You know, you kind of – you have to apply different skills at every place and uh, I don't know. they're they're all fun you know yeah absolutely it's not like you're in the nfl and you have a, a regulation field everywhere you go so kind of exactly exactly uh what is your go-to travel snack on the road oh i'm a trail mix guy i like me <laughs> i like some trail mix the all trail mix it's 50 percent m&ms exactly yeah that one <laughs> yeah that one 50 percent m&ms you know um <laughs> but no i like trail mix uh i eat sunflower seeds a lot at night when i'm trying to stay awake while driving um but yeah probably trail mix would be my biggest snack i guess but uh it probably it might not be very healthy but at least you, you know you kind of feel good about eating it when you know you got the peanuts and that all that in there and uh, yeah. yeah well that's really all that matters this is exactly as as about it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, well, Cash, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. Uh, you certainly have a lot of momentum built up from high school on to college and now with this recent honor. So wish you the best of luck in 2024. And thanks for hanging out with us today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, once again, that was Cash Rob, 2023 Resist All Rookie of the Year Steer Wrestler. Thanks for tuning in to Breaking the Barrier. And as a reminder, all previous episodes are available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. A big thank you to the Rural Radio Network for their support as well. Thanks for tuning in.